Hey everyone, welcome back to your C programming tutorial series. Now, before we go into more C programming, I wanted to take a break to learn some of the basic Unix and Linux commands. So when you are working with a Unix or Linux operating system, there are a ton of built-in commands that you're going to need to know. The reason I think this is so important is because one of the reasons C became so popular is because it was the standard programming language when Unix and Linux gained popularity. So there is like this special connection between C and the Unix Linux environments. Now if you're on Mac or something like Ubuntu, all of these commands are going to be exactly the same. Now the actual difference between Unix and Linux, that's not so important for right now. All you really need to know is that Linux is a Unix-like operating system. So these are actually very similar. Because these are so similar, oftentimes people will just use the terms interchangeably. That's because if you want to teach these commands that apply to both of these, you don't always want to say Unix slash Linux. <laughs> so if I just say Linux, just assume I'm also talking about Unix, which includes Mac operating systems like OS X. So let's get started. One of the biggest things Linux is known for is the terminal. When it comes to Windows, no one really uses the command prompt unless they're super techie and they need to do something on there. But when we're talking about Linux, even the average user knows some commands in the terminal. And because Linux is so popular, I guarantee you, you are going to need to know some of these commands. The first type of commands you should learn how to do are the commands that do the basic things like working with the operating system, moving files, copying files, all of the stuff you can normally do with a mouse, but you want to do it all in text. <laughs> I know, it sounds fun, but it actually is kind of cool. Just like you can do a lot of things visually with a mouse, you can do a lot of the same things with commands. For example, you can navigate folders, you can rename things, all of that good stuff. So the first command I'm going to teach you is called PWD. What this command does is it prints the current directory, or the working directory, which is why it's pwd. And you can see I'm in users slash Caleb Curry slash YouTube. This is basically the location that I'm in in the terminal. To see all of the files and folders in this folder, you can type ls. And you can see nothing showed up. That's because there actually isn't anything in this folder. <laughs> Now, I should probably start using a more technical term, directory. That is what folders used to be called before the term folder came into existence. So, folder and directory, that's the same exact thing. Now, let's say I want to move to this Caleb Curry folder. I can do this by typing cd dot dot. Now, when I type in ls, you can see there's all kinds of stuff. We can actually ask for more specific information by doing things such as ls space dash l. This gives much more information. You can see this gives the file permissions, the dates, all kinds of good stuff. So I can just press up and ls dash l shows up. This dash l right here, this is known as a flag. We can pass flags to these commands to alter the output. Another common command is ls dash a. The first command, ls-l, what it does is it lists the long version of what we are trying to accomplish. The ls-a lists all the files, including ones with the little periods, which are hidden files. If you want to send more than one flag, you can combine them in one, like this, ls-la. This is saying list the long version and list all the files. If we want to navigate into one of these folders, all we gotta do is figure out the name. For example, let's say I want to go into this YouTube folder. All we have to do is say CD for change directory and then type in the name of that folder. And now when we say PWD, print working directory, you can see we're in that YouTube folder again. One more thing about the LS command is that there's two special ones in this list. If we scroll up, there is a dot and a dot dot. The single dot is a reference to the directory that is being listed right here. So the Caleb Curry folder. The dot dot is the parent directory, which in this case, if we scroll down and go back to our pwd command, you can see that that would be the users folder. When we are typing in the cd command, there's two types of paths we can give. There's one called an absolute path, and there's another called a relative path. So I'm going to show you how to do both of those. 
the absolute path is from the very beginning. So you say CD slash, which means from the very beginning. So we are starting right here. Then we can put any folder we want. Users slash Caleb Curry. Enter. And you can see that works just fine. We say PWD and we're in that folder. The other one is a relative path, which we actually showed earlier. That's changing the directory relative to where you are. So if you do cd dot dot, the parent is relative to what folder you're in. What I mean by that is if you look up here, the parent of the YouTube folder is Caleb Curry, but the parent of Caleb Curry is users. So what folder you go to depends on the folder you're currently in. That is how a relative path works. And now you can see that we are in just users. So that is kind of like your head first dive into <laughs> Linux commands. Hopefully I didn't overwhelm you with too much information. <laughs> I would recommend just writing down each of the commands or you can download the notes that I have on my website. I will have a link at the end of the video and that'll just have them all there for you. So thanks guys for watching. In the next video, I hope to teach you some more Linux commands. So be sure to check that out. Peace.